Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for October the 9th. I'm Jonathan Keensler. Today's scripture reading is found in Isaiah chapters 59 through 61 and Colossians chapter 1. The title of my devotional is, Why Does God Hide His Face From You? And we are looking at Isaiah 59 verse 2, which says, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. Now, the promised blessings of Isaiah chapter 60 and 61 are some of the most beautiful um, blessings and promises in all of Scripture. However, before coming into the blessing, God's people must pass through the way of repentance. And that's what takes place in Isaiah 59. <coughs> so we're just going to detail some of these um, at, in, in this chapter. First of all, people must believe that God is able and willing to save. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. Um, so we see right at the beginning that um, God is letting us know that he's able to save. We first must come to him and believe that he is powerful, that he is able to act, he's able to work for us. Then we see in verse 2, in our present verse, that sin separates us from God. We need to take sin seriously. God definitely does. What's the answer for sin? God sending his son Jesus to die for us, die in our place on our behalf. That's how seriously he takes sin. We need to as well. We need to hate sin. God is so holy that if he looks at sin, sin is destroyed. Therefore, he hides his face from us out of mercy so that he doesn't judge us, so that we're not destroyed along with the sin. Verses 3 to 8 demonstrates that the actions, the ways, and the thoughts of man are evil, and those who trust in them will die. We can't save ourselves. Only God can. And we see that there is no hope in the plans and, and strategies of men in verses 9 to 11. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot help ourselves. Only God can help us. And verses 12 to 14 note that we are hopeless to please God on our own. And then verse 15 notes that lost people perishing in their sin um, do not please him. That God does not want people to die in their sin. And that's why he provided a way, an incredible way, the only way, Jesus Christ. And so verse 16 notes emphatically that man is unable to bring salvation. Verse 16, and he saw that there was no man and was astonished that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought salvation to him and his righteousness upheld him. And then in verse 17 and 18, we see that God offers salvation. Man was unable to, to do it for himself, was unable to stand up, unable to even ask for it. And God does this. God offers salvation. But humanity must still respond with acceptance and respect. They must do so with faith and trust. Those who refuse his salvation will suffer wrath, will be under judgment. So if we're not living in holiness, God is far from us. Holiness being separated unto God, separate from sin unto God, to his ways, to his purposes. Um, it's not just being separate from sin. It's being separated unto God. We do what God wants us to do, not what the world wants us to do. And so God's overwhelming blessings are coming. In verse 19, it says, So they will fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun, for he will come like a rushing stream, which the wind of the Lord drives. And also the promises, the blessings are for you and your children. Verses 59 to 20, what a great promise for us and our families. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit, which is upon you, and my words, which I have put in your mouth, shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your offspring, nor from the mouth of your offspring's offspring, says the Lord, from now and forever. And so God, who gave his spirit even to Isaiah, and to those who would believe is also promised to our children and our children's children. How awesome that is. And that we will speak of his blessings, speak of his praise. We get to be his ambassadors. We get to be his witnesses, even to the ends of the earth. 
So have you acknowledged your sin, turned from it to the salvation that only God can provide? Do you see that God doesn't want to turn away from us? He wants to help us. He wants to save. But if we will hold on to our sin, God will turn his face away from us. How awful that is. But he does it out of mercy and patience so that we would turn to him and we would not face his judgment. So have you let go of your sin so that you can take hold of God's blessings? Have you given it to God? Have you, that's what confessing your sin is all about. Turning from your sin. Turning to God and embracing him and loving him with all that you are. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. What a great word of blessing. But Lord, it's also a word of warning that we need to turn from our sin. We need to rep- live in repentance, turning to you. Even as you expose our sin, we need to take it to you and you wash us and cleanse us. And you are re- you are conforming us even to the image of Jesus. How awesome that is. Thank you for all your blessings to those who love you. In your name we pray. Amen.